Welcome to Clearview Church Online. My name is Donovan Reed. I have the privilege of serving as the lead pastor of Clearview Church and the Clearview family. We're so glad that you joined us online so that together we can set our heart's affection and our mind's attention on Jesus. At Clearview Church, our vision is that we exist to help all generations develop a clear view of who God is, their identity in Christ, and His purpose for all people. We accomplish this by the mission of loving God, loving the church, loving the city, and loving the nations. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's stand on our feet, let's turn up the volume, and let's set our heart's affection and our mind's attention on Jesus. shared, someone shared this piece of advice with me, and now I wish to share it with you guys. I believe that the greatest thing we have in this life is the opportunity to pray to the master of the universe. Prayer is many things, but in the simplest terms, it is talking with God. If I have, if I have any wisdom to share, it is to encourage you to always keep this line of communication open between you and Father God. God hears and answers every prayer that you say. No matter what season of life you are in, he is with you every step of the way and hears every prayer that you say. Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to pray over our graduates, so if you can stretch your hands forward, we're going to pray. God, thank you for each and every one of these people. God, you've seen where they, how far they've come, and you know where they're going. God, I pray blessings over their future. I pray that you would bless them in every step.
step that they take from now on. I pray that you would guide them and direct their steps as they move forward. God, direct them to the right places and direct them to the right people. I pray that you would give them friends and mentors and people to build them up and support them and encourage them and challenge them, God. And I pray in every step as they, that they take, I pray that you would be with them, that you would speak to them, that you would guide them and direct them, and I pray blessings over everything that they do, God. Thank you for these people. In your name I pray. Amen. So we do have a small gift for you guys. They are what we call um, an adulting survival kit. There are a lot of fun things coming up, so we put some fun goodies in there. So everything that like a college kid needs, like portable charger, ramen noodles, <laughs> some fun things. So. Yeah. Congratulations.
opportunity to share into your lives and your hearts today. Uh, I want to first thank Pastor Donovan and Pastor Sarah. Can we give it up for our pastors? I mean, they, you know, the season that they're in wasn't expected. It, 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 came, it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, when, whenever, whenever things happened with Pastor Donovan, you know, I got a call Saturday morning. I wasn't definitely expecting that. And, um, and I'm just so thankful for both of you to be uh, a part of my life. I, I, Carrie's not here right now, but part of her life and part of our kids' life as well. So I want to thank you for that and thank you for the opportunity. It's an honor to be up here, to be able to, to, be able to stand here and to be able to fill in for you. And uh, some big shoes to fill. And, uh, and, of course, you have bigger feet than me, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, to add to the announcements, uh, potty training, uh, that's adults, too. So if you're an adult volunteering, please make sure you're potty trained. I think we really appreciate that. Or Pastor Sarah would appreciate it. Or whoever's cleaning it up will appreciate it. Um, so today, I am so excited to be able to... I said that differently from first service, and I just made myself laugh. No, no, no. <laughs> so today, we're going to talk about... The key to keeping a good foundation. So a foundation, when you're, when you're building a house, where's the foundation? It's on the, bottom. it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Before you build the roof, before you build the sides, before you put the plumbing and electrical, you need a foundation. So we're going to talk about the key to keeping a good foundation is a good influence. A good influence. Now you might be saying, man, that's a, that's a broad statement right there. Because good influence, you know, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, there's so many different ways where we can, you can look at that. And we're going to look at a couple different ways. Uh, but first, let's just look at the word influence. Uh, you know, how, how many people can say that they've had someone in their life who was an influence? Uh, you know, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people in here, you know, your parent. You now, for me, it was my dad. He played a big influence in my life. Uh, but for some people, they actually, and especially back in, 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 in previous times, not say previous times, previous times, 40, 50 years ago, you know, historical figures were looked upon as an influence. Uh, you, know, you look at Abe Lincoln as a president. Uh, you look at several other key um, historical figures. And one for me, since you know, I'm born and bred in Oklahoma, uh, is Will Rogers. There you go. Now, now, who has heard of Will Rogers? Man, more than first service. I love that. I love it. So Will Rogers, he was uh, born in 1879 in Oolaga, Oklahoma. Now, for those who don't know who Will Rogers is, Zach, you can put up that, that photo there. Uh, so that's Will Rogers. He was, he was, you know, with boy bands now, you know, you have to be able to sing, dance, and, uh, and whatever, the, and act, whatever. Will Rogers could do it all. He could act. He was a comedian. He was a roper. He could ride a horse better than I can get onto a horse. Mm -hmm. This guy was the jack of all trades. And what was so great about Will Rogers is you, you never heard anyone talk bad of Will Rogers. Even, even now today, you know, there's, there's some negative that, that come out with the other historical figures that we've had. You, you never hear anything bad about Will Rogers. He was just that good of a guy. You know, and his famous quote, he has a lot of famous quotes out there. If you get a chance, just Google some Will Rogers famous quotes. They're inspiring, but and some of them are just downright, downright hilarious. But I love this one. This is my favorite one growing up because I knew about Will. They taught him in, you know, when I was in elementary school in Oklahoma. So it was, I've never met a man I didn't like. Boy, what, what a statement right there. I mean, of all the interactions, I mean, he, he was a celebrity. And, and for everyone that he came in the counter to say that, I mean, that, that's a big statement, but that's who Will Rogers was, that he'd never met an individual that he didn't like. And, um, and as we look at influences, you know, me as a worship pastor, you know, I look for, you know, influential writers of, of worship music. And for me, one of the main ones is Rich Mullins. Is, is anybody... <coughs> Remember Rich Mullins. Yeah. So Rich, for those of you who don't know who Rich Mullins is, awesome he's God. the awesome God. Uh -huh. So I'll read it. You know, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. That's Rich Mullins. Uh -huh. Rich Mullins is such an inspirational uh, ind individual in, in his lifespan. You know, he had a very short lifespan. But he wrote some powerful worship songs that people know today. I, I think even 100 years we're still going to know the lyrics to Awesome God. That's right. And for those of you who have never seen it, there's a great movie called Ragamuffin. 
uh, that is the, the, based off the, the story of Rich Mullins. And it's absolutely fantastic. And there's a one part of it where he, he goes to college. He goes back to college to get a degree at the same time of having the number one Christian hit. I mean, everyone in, in their babies and mamas knew Awesome God. And so he'd go to college and people would be like, Rich Mullins? The awesome God guy? Yes, I wrote other songs, but yes, the awesome God guy. You know, but he, he was such an inspiration for me as a, as a worship pastor, as a songwriter. But the word influence has, has changed a lot. You know, I, I've, I've mentioned some people, you know, Will Rogers, you know, he died in the 1920s. And, uh, and Rich Mullins, he died in the early 90s. So we're looking at, I'm looking at figures that, that were you know, before 2000s. And in the past 10, 15 years, the work influence has changed to influencer. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, influencer. So I, I know this term because I have teenagers and I'm, you know, I do know social media a little bit. So I know, I've always heard of the term influencer. So I was just curious. I was like, what does Google say? What does influencer mean? So dictionary.com defines it as a person who has a power to influence many people through social media, social media or traditional media. So to give you a, a better picture of this, if you have a thousand followers on any social media site, TikTok, uh, YouTube, Instagram, you are classified by society as an influencer. In fact, we have three point between 3.2 and 37 million influencers around the world. Think about that. 37 million influencers. There's only one Will Rogers. There's only one, one Rich Mullins. But yet we have 37 million influencers. And I'm here to, today, and as we dive into this word, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share the conclusion to my sermon right now. You are an influencer. That's right. yeah. If you are a believer of Christ, yeah. you are an influencer. Mm -hmm. You don't need a thousand people to follow your social media to influence someone. Because influencer doesn't, doesn't have to be 64 characters or less, which I think Twitter got rid of that now. But it, it can be with anything, any, any interaction that you have. In fact, I have this quote by Craig Rochelle, who's a, who's a pastor of Live Church. And he has this great quote, and I'm going to reference this quote a lot in our sermon. And, and it goes, you have no idea how one conversation, one conversation, one word of encouragement, or one expression of love might change someone's life. I mean, think about that for a second. Right. Just one word, one conversation. You know, I, I, I am... I didn't know this quote before, before this week when I was putting this uh, sermon together. I, I, I never heard this quote before. And, and when I found that, I was just like, wow. Because I think to myself all the times that, I have, uh, that I have, I, I've done this, but on the other hand, my missed opportunities. You know, I think about the people that I could have reached out to because we all disguise hurts in different ways. And so I don't, sometimes we don't know when people are going through stuff. But we lean on the Holy Spirit. We lean on, we lean on that to be able to guide us through our life. Why? To be an influencer. To be able to help build. To be able to improve someone's life. To give them the encouragement to go with life. That's right. So as we talk about influencer, you know, there's, there's different ways of influencing. I mean, do, and as, we, as I go forward, just keep these questions in your mind. That do you realize the influence that you have, that you personally have, or the number of people that you have an impact on around you? Who's looking up to you? I mean, as a parent, that's that's pretty evident. Uh, I mean, if you have kids, I mean, kids look up to you. I mean, I looked up to my parents. But even even a broader than that, I mean, the number of people that you have an impact around. What about, what about your kids' friends? Maybe they don't have that Christian lifestyle in their house, and, and you can be that influence for them. And last but not least, the last question is, who is counting on you? And how is your faith influencing people around you? 
So I got three points to my serving, and the first point is being a good influence. That's right. Being a good influence. And I know that's just, it's like, man, that's like second grade there. But, but it's, it's something that needs to be said, and it's something that needs to be heard. Mm-hmm. Being right. a good influence, because it's so easy for us just to go out beside these walls, be able to get into our cars, and be able to turn left onto royalty and have someone honk our horn at us because we're going too fast, we're going too slow. One gesture can change that whole perspective of that situation. Yeah. Being an influence. Okay. Being that influencer. And as we, as we dive into the word this morning, I'm going to pray right quick before I, before I get into the scriptures. and Because uh, I believe that what I have today is, is uh, something that God has wanted me to share to you people this morning. And, uh, and I need to pray for a little bit of help. So, dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for an opportunity once again just to come into your house. And God, we just set aside distractions. We set aside everything that's going on in our lives. We set aside everything that's going on in our world, at work. Right now, we just set all that aside right now, Lord. And we just focus our hearts and minds on you, Jesus. And God, for me personally, I just pray for help, God, that you just, Holy Spirit, just begin to give me the words to speak to the people today, Father. And that you have a softened heart this morning, God. And that we would just leave knowing a better understanding of who you are and what impact we can have as an influencer, Jesus. God, we thank you so much for what you're going to do this morning. In your name we pray, amen. So Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 16. I'm going to read it here in just a second. This is, this is a critical, this scripture is to build you up. This isn't a story. This isn't a fairy tale. This is a scripture to help build you up. And it says, starting in verse 13, that you are the salt of the earth. Yeah. Someone look at your neighbor and say, you're salty. Hey, salty. <laughs> Whose favorite chips are salt and vinegar? Praise God. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? There you go. Yeah. You know, my wife, she, you know, my wife is a wonderful cook, and, and she's not here uh, for, for me to brag on her, but I'll, I'll be, able, I'll tell you right now, well, that means she's good. I mean, there's not very many meals that I can complain. Now, I'm a picky eater. She's opened my mind to uh, different foods that I, as a child, I would, I would look at sideways and give them to the dog. But, and, and that's, that's, you know, she's had the impact. But one of her famous things is every time that I cook, or, and even our eight-year-old, she has the same, she's the same way, she says the same exact way as, as Carrie does. I'll make something, i will be like, how do you like it? It's good. Needs more salt. <laughs> needs more salt. Always needs more salt. So it says, but what good is salt if it has lost its fla- flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. <laughs> Verse 14 says that you are the light of the world. Lean to your neighbor and say that you're shiny. You're shiny. You're a believer in Christ. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Just like like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one light, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. You know, totally excited. I didn't even tell this in in first service. But like this morning, you know. I'm an early to bed person. I've, I've gotten to that age in my life that staying up past 10 o'clock is not feasible. Uh, I, I don't think humanly in my body that that can happen very much. If it is, then between 10 and whenever I go to bed, it's I, my mind's gone. So good luck having a conversation. So I went to bed early last night because I knew that I'd be here early. And so at 1.30 this morning, my wife wakes me up. It's like, Tristy, that. How many people know how that feels when you wake up and you have no light? And for our first time, this is our first time having lights out in, in a new house that's older. The, the boards creak and we can't see our hand in front of our faces. So being the light into the world, that's that time where you, you find your flashlights and then you get very frustrated. Why? Because the batteries are dead in it. I went through, I found six flashlights, four of them had dead batteries in it. Boy, that's frustrating. 
But God has called us to be the light of the world, not to hide our light, not to hide the lamp that, that, he's in, that he has lit inside of us, not to hide that at all, but to always have fresh batteries. There you yeah. go. That's right. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see. Once again, being an influencer, giving that kind word, giving that encouraging, uh, that, what, what's the quote? The word of encouragement, that expression of love that might change someone's life. It's right there in scripture. It, it, it's right there in verse 16. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So when we talk, when we look at influencers, and now we're going to dive into the, the, the biblical of an influencer. And, and I, I went through several different people in the Bible that I was like, man, that would be a good one to talk about. Paul, that'd be a great one. David, that'd be a great one. But it, it all starts and ends with one. That's Jesus. That's right. Jesus was the ultimate influencer. And in fact, as we as our next set of scriptures, Matthew 8, to set this up, this is the story where Jesus calms the storm. But as we read the scripture, it says, Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake, with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him. Shouting, Lord, save us, we're going down. Jesus responded, why are you afraid you have so little faith? Imagine he's probably a little frustrated, too. I mean, if you wake me up as a deep sleep, then, you know, I'm going to be um, saying the exact same thing. You, so little faith. And then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves. And suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. They said, who is this man, they asked. Because <laughs> even the winds and waves obey him. Yes. Influence. Mm. Jesus, influencer. You see, I, I, I got this, this quote from uh, Dan Ryland, and, and honestly, I can't tell you who Dan Ryland is, but I found this quote, and I've been wrestling with it all week of, you know, if, if this should be a part of this sermon, and it just fits, it really fits well here. And it says that Jesus didn't need people to help him. Yeah, right. He didn't need 12 disciples, yet he chose them. Just like he's chosen us. He could have been born, grown to stature and wisdom, taught, been put to death, raised up from the grave and returned to heaven without m messing with 12 guys and their issues. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't need to wrestle with things such as the tensions from men leaving their families, competing for status, arguing over who's greatest, asking frustrating questions like, uh, hey, we have a storm and we're in a boat, what are we going to do? And an ultimate betrayal. However, working through other leaders was God's plan from the beginning. Yes. See, he made the he made the mission clear as day. He made the vision clear as day in Luke chapter 10, verse 2. It said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And then you want to say in Mark 16, 15 and 16, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be content. Guess what? You're called to be an influencer. That's right. You are called to spread the word. Whether You don't need to go out into the whole world because you have a mission field as soon as you walk out the store. You have a mission field when you go into Walmart. You have a mission field as soon as you walk into your work. You have a mission field every time you, you have a Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe you have a relative that isn't saved. You know, those are your opportunities. That is your opportunity to provide that encouraging That's word, right. to be able to show that expression of love, to be able to make an impact. Why? Because you're an influencer. That's right. Thank you, Lord. He made the mission clear. And point number two is surrounding yourself with good influences. Boy, this is a tough one. Surrounding yourself with good influences. I was so, uh, I'm so blessed that you know, Pastor Sarah and Pastor Dobbin had the vision to, the, to do the Wednesday nights where it was the separation. The women were in here, the guys were in the house. 
you know, me being new to an area, I mean, these, these were the only two people I knew moving up here. And at that point, I only known them for about five to six months. And so this was a great time for me to, to be able to, A, be to inspire, and B, for people to inspire me. You know, people like Tom, people like Doug, uh, man, your name is Corey, Corey. <laughs> I want to say Chris, <laughs> but I'm glad I, I hesitated. Tony, talk. I love you, Tony. <laughs> they, they provide this opportunity to be able to help each other. You know, in Proverbs 14, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 27, it says in verse 17, 18, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I'm not saying that you don't have to have friends that aren't Christians. That's okay. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to influence and torch Christ. Mm-hmm. But as we make our personal walk, as we have, as we grow as Christians, ourselves, just us, not worrying about other people, we need those people around us. They're going to be able to build us up in, in the time that we need them to build us up. Because we're all going to have those battles, we're all going to have those moments, and we, it, it, we can't do this, we cannot do this life alone. It's always important to share things with your spouse, but you know there's some things that sometimes our spouse you know doesn't understand. Your spouse will be there for you; they'll be there to support you. But sometimes it's it's, it's important to have someone else mm-hmm. that might see it from a different avenue. Iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. As a worker who tend a fig tree are allowed to eat the fruit, so workers who protect their employees' interests will be rewarded. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's, it's very critical for, uh, for us as an influencer to not be a roadblock at the same time. There you go. Romans 14, 13 says, Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore. Mm-hmm. Boy, how many times have we heard that? Yeah. Not to judge. I mean, th- this, is, this is back however many years ago that Paul, that Paul wrote this. But therefore, let us not judge one another. That's what we're called to do. We're not called to judge. There you go. Doesn't matter what your past is. Doesn't matter where you came from. Yeah. You you you're in the house of God. That's right. You're in here with common with people that have the common beliefs, common ideas. We're not here to judge one another, but to rather determine this not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. There you go. We need those good influences around us. At the same time, we don't need to be a hindrance. And that falls in yourself. That falls in your walk. And that leads me to my third point. And this falls right in with what I just said, and that's to pray daily. Pray daily. Pray daily for God to reveal to you the areas that need improvement in your life. And we're we're, we're not perfect. I think we've said that more times than, than we can count up here on stage. I've heard Pastor Donovan say it. I've heard Pastor Sarah say it. I think I say it every day uh, to my wife. I'm not perfect. I'm sorry. I think I say sorry more than saying I'm not perfect. But pray daily to God reveal to areas that need improvement in our lives. That's critical. It's critical for our own walk. Is to be able to have God reveal to us areas that, that, that we need improvement. Because sometimes we don't see it. Other people might see it, but we don't see it. Tell him. And maybe, maybe you're, you're in a situation to where maybe you know what it is. You know, for me, you know, the, the older I've gotten, I don't know, if, it, I don't think it's because of my age, but it seems like, you know, the older my children are getting, my fuse is getting short. The, the older they're getting, you know, I, I'm, I'm reacting quicker. I'm quicker to the tongue than I would have been when they were younger. God help me. Help me to improve that area. Why? Because I needed to be that influence. I need to be that influencer in my kid's life because they're, they're the legacy. After I'm long gone, they're the legacy. There they're the go. legacy to their kids, and they're the legacy to their kids, their kids, and so on, so on. But even beyond that, we have an opportunity to be a legacy to even beyond our own children. Mm-hmm. You know, I had the great opportunity in New Mexico uh, to, we had a, um, a, Youth worship leader. He was he was 15 years old when I moved down there, and uh, 
And I was told that he's a diamond in the rough. That's what he was phrased to me as. He's like, he's like he, he has some skill, but he has the art. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to influence him, to be able to help him with his calling. Why? Because I know he's going to be doing the same thing, and to that person, he'll be able to do the same thing. That way, when, whenever I'm 80, 90 years old, if God willing, I make it that long, I can be able to look out and be able to see all the influences I have that are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across this world. That's what it's about. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Be careful how we pray that sometimes. That's though. right. Because when we pray, like for me, if I, if I pray for my short fuse, God might put me in a situation to where I have to hold it. Mm -hmm. yeah. With having four kids in the house, yeah, he definitely will. See, our church churches are full of individuals with the potential for great influence. Every person in this in this in this sanctuary, every child in that kids area has the has they have the potential to be that great influence. Leadership is needed for the workplace. It's needed for politics and even in the family. That's all I want you coming up here. Start playing for me. You know, right before I, uh, probably 15 minutes before I, before first service, I was just kind of just going over my notes and, and, uh, and I was just looking, looking to, See if there's anything else that God wanted me to add to it. And I found this quote, and I couldn't even find whose quote this is. So if they're watching this live stream, I apologize. Uh, but prayer should be the key of the day and the lock of the night. Prayer should be the key of the day and the lock of the night. You know, I did this in first service, but I think it's, in, it's important that I do this in second service too. I know there are people who are going through battles in here. That we pray daily to help us through these battles. And that's what he wants us to do. But if you're going through a battle and and and, and it just seems like Satan's just he just piling everything on you and you don't know how you're gonna be able to get out, but you're just praying through it and you're and you're you're having other, you're surrounding yourself with influencers that pray you through your situation. Guess what? At the end of the day, if you're being, if you're in a battle and Satan's tempting you, you're doing something right. I told Pastor Sarah and Pastor Donna, I'll tell you again, just in case you didn't hear me in the first service, you're doing something right. Right. Yes, amen. You're doing something right. Prayer should be the key of the day and the lock of the night. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for the word. I hope you were challenged, but I also hope that the Holy Spirit changed your life in that time of worship and the word. Now, if you've joined us today and this is your first time experiencing church online or even hearing the gospel, I just want to encourage you uh, that what we believe is that Jesus died on a cross for everybody. We believe that the word of God in John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. It's a free gift for all people. All we have to do is receive it. And what does that mean? So in Romans 10, 9, also in the Bible, it says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I'll be saved. So all you need to do is profess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in John three sixteen to be the truth, that Jesus is the Messiah. And then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, which shows that God, that Jesus was holy God and holy man when he walked the earth you'll be saved. And what does salvation means? It, it is a free gift that says forgiveness of our sins is available through the grace and mercy of God through his son, Jesus. So what we're going to do here in a minute is I just want to invite you to pray a simple prayer with me and you're just going to repeat after me. And then afterwards, if you pray that prayer in your heart and you pray it out loud, I just want to encourage you to comment in the comment section that you gave your heart to Jesus today. And then I want you also, if you can email us clearview at clearviewchurch.net so that we can follow up with you and help you on your journey. Because here's the thing, you were not meant to do this life alone and we want to come alongside of you and help you walk on the journey. Just like we said earlier, our vision 
is to help all generations develop a clear view of who God is, your identity in Christ, and his purpose that he created you for, his purpose for all people. And so we're going to pray that prayer. And in this prayer, we're going to simply say the very factor that, God, thank you for sending your son Jesus and forgive me of my sins. And sin is anything we think, say, or do that does not please God. So let's pray that prayer right now. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins, of the things that I've thought, the things that I've said, and the things that I've done that do not please you. And God, I profess with my mouth right now that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart, God, you raised him from the dead. And from this day forward, I can walk in a new power. I can walk in a new way because I have experienced the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You see, the word also says that if you are in Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. You are no longer the person you were, but you are now set free from the bondage of sin into becoming the new creation in Christ. And if you want to know more about what that looks like and how to live out that life, one, I would encourage you, we're right here in Columbia Station on the corner of Boone and 82 Royalton Road to come to the church and enjoy a service in person. If you can't do that, reach out to us through the email at clearview at clearviewchurch.net so that we can help give you the next steps in your walk with Jesus. We're so excited for you. The Word of God also tells us that if one person gives their heart to Jesus, that there's a party thrown in heaven celebrating your name being written in the Lamb's Book of life. And so we are so excited for you and we celebrate with you today and uh, we can't wait to help you on your journey in your next steps.